Archie, episode 181. My name is Dave Hunt, and I'm joined by Michael Swick. How's it going, Dave? We waited for the Nintendo Direct and also for me to go to wrestling. It kind of worked out. We got a decent Nintendo Direct. How are you? Oh, I'm good. I'm good. Um, yeah. No, it was... I think on Tuesday I was like going to work and I was like, huh, I wonder if we're going to record tonight. And then I look at Twitter and I'm like, oh, they announced a Nintendo Direct. I'm like, well, we're not recording at least till Wednesday. <laughs> so. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I'm actually going to AEW, so uh, we're going to have to do Thursday. <laughs> yeah, which is fine. All right. So we are Digital Days Gaming. We are a weekly podcast that posts every Thursday morning uh, under normal circumstances, uh, 6 a.m. Eastern time. Uh, this episode will be posted probably Friday. Um, and we did a bunch of, um, we did take a little bit of time off uh, last week, about 10 days, uh, just because of Summer Game Fest and the Xbox Game Showcase, and then previously before that, the PlayStation thing. So we found that when we crunch a lot of episodes sometimes, that I think you guys get episode fatigue. So um, that's kind of why we just weren't in a huge rush. And nothing really else happened after uh, the Xbox Showcase. The, uh, the Ubisoft Forward and some of the other smaller events weren't mind-boggling or anything like that, so... Um, even enough that they made it on this week's agenda, so they would definitely didn't carry any sh- any cachet with them. So, but uh, we are live on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Digital Days Gaming, where you can uh, sub- uh, subscribe to us if you choose. If you want to link your Amazon account and your Twitch account, you get Prime Gaming, um, and we, you can use a free sub on there, or you can follow us on Twitch as well. That's free. Uh, you can also do a paid subscription, as we are an affiliate, so it's like five bucks, um, and we do get a, a kickback of that as well. So that if that's a way you want to support us, that's awesome. Everything else is linked in the show notes, Facebook, Discord, Twitter, um, all of those are linked in the show notes. Uh, the Discord actually has been a pretty cool conversation the last week or so. Um, the collections thing, the collections channel of people posting some of their stuff has been pretty active, as well as the general channel. There's been some Diablo chatter, there's been some other chatter around just in general gaming chatter, which has actually been kind of cool. So uh, go ahead and check those things out. And um, on Facebook, you can post in there and ask questions as well. There's some Diablo chatter in there too. So check those things out and we're going to jump right into the news yeah we're going to start off with some good happy news which is going to be the nintendo direct nintendo pretty consistently i feel like delivers on their directs especially when they keep things kind of vague on what you can expect at the direct usually if they tell you directly what they're going to do those tend to be a little disappointing uh but when they leave it a little little up in the air uh there's a little something, and I think from this, it's going to be me and Dave will probably come out of the the direct recap, being like, "Oh, it was a pretty good direct," but also maybe, maybe just a little bit, being like, it "Seems like we're hitting the end of life of the Switch," uh, mm-hmm. in terms of like what can be done and ideas that they might have. Uh, but uh, we'll go through this one by one, stopping at the stuff that we care about. Uh, so the first one will probably breeze right through. Uh, Park uh, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. The Hidden Treasure of Aereo Zero DLC. This is going to be the paid expansion that's coming to uh, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Dave, I didn't pick up this Pokemon. I know you for sure didn't pick up this Pokemon. <laughs> nope. uh, but paid DLC is coming. It looks good. Uh, I know this specific Scarlet and Violet had pretty rough launches. And I think everything's been kind of squared away with that. Uh, we got another Sonic announcement, or this was the same announcement that we had before, but it's coming to Switch. Uh, Sonic Superstars, uh, nothing new here other than more footage. Dave, you still on board for this uh, Sonic game? Uh, it looks cool. Um, I think like they should, you know, they didn't really show anything crazy, but um, for some reason, I just have this like side scroller mode going lately for me the last year or so, and I think it looks great. Yeah. And for me, I'm still like, I, Sega's tricked me too many times with Sonic games, so I'm hesitant, but trying to be optimistic on if this one's going to be good. Uh, this one, uh, no release date, right, Dave? Or window? Mm, on I thought it? it's September. I thought September? It said. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, then we got a free-to-play online multiplayer adventure game that looks kind of life simmy. Uh, Palia. Oh, yeah, it caught, it caught Angela's interest a little bit, but then she's like, she saw something else happen in the trailer, and she's like, oh, like, so I'll probably have to pay for that. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, th- this definitely feels like every direct has to have some sort of, like, life simmy game, some sort of, like, farm game. Uh, it just kind of has become a staple. Uh, but this being free to play, 
is one of those things where it's just like it's you, you want to know how they're going to monetize yeah. this and how it's going to well, work. Well, I think they've had some awesome success with like Animal Crossing and um, like Stardew Valley, even games like that that have done well on their platforms. The problem is that those are for the most part they're one and dones. You get the sixty mm-hmm. bucks, you get the seventy bucks, and that's it. Might be a little twenty dollar expansion here or there, but versus them trying to accomplish what everybody's trying to accomplish is continuous monetization somehow, whether it's through seasonal content, free to play content, paid content, season passes. And Nintendo is obviously behind on that just because that requires a very stable online connectivity. Yeah. <laughs> so. Animal Crossing was their one that yeah. it, you know sold tens of millions of copies, but they didn't really support that game long term. Right. Uh, this isn't like an official Nintendo thing as far as I know, but they partner a lot with those ones because I'm sure developers see like a demand for like a live service Animal Crossing like game. So there's developers like maybe we can do that. Yeah, especially uh, if they can figure out a way to land the don't always have to be connected to the Internet. Like if you could do something like. I don't even know what the answer is, but like you have to sign, you have to be connected to the internet once every like seven days, you know, or something like that. Um, but you could still like have all, you could be connected, save your game, have all these materials that you're you're harvesting, have the clock still run, and then just kind of upload later. Yeah, just like so. oh, I I I need new content, so let me just tap yeah. into the server and let that stuff like trickle down. Yeah, uh, especially when you're doing a life sim sort of game, that's the perfect like offline game. Mm-hmm. So like you'd have to find that balance. Uh, the next one we got uh, another trailer for Persona Five Tactica. Uh, this is coming November seventeenth. Uh, this was at the Xbox Showcase, so we saw kind of a lot. Like yeah. there was leaks for this game, so there's not much to talk about here. A game Dave might be a little interested in, just from the concept, uh, Myth Force, which has got like a 80s Saturday morning yep. cartoon vibe. Uh, this looks uh, really it cool, is a so. online co-op game coming to Switch later this year. Uh, it's mul- other things too, but Switch, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's the thing. Uh, the, the Switch ones, they don't really ever tease <laughs> like other platforms uh, coming out or give any hint at that. Uh, then we got uh, Splatoon 3 stuff coming. Uh, they basically just uh, announced like their next event, Splatfest, uh, where you pick your flavor of ice cream. Uh, <laughs> so that's coming. Detective Pikachu Returns is uh, coming. It is going to be a sequel to the 3DS game from a long time ago. Uh, and this is coming October 6th. So this is Nintendo. This is going to be a theme with the Nintendo <laughs> stuff of like, hey, here's an announcement. And it's also coming really soon. Uh, but Detective Pikachu, everyone loves that franchise. Uh, it's it's a fun concept. Mm-hmm. More Detective Pichu, Pikachu is always good. Uh, this is just... It's worth mentioning. Me and Dave aren't really the biggest Pokemon fans, uh, let alone the Detective Pikachu series, but it just shows you that Nintendo just has a lot in their back pocket mm-hmm. at any given point. Uh, one thing I know Dave will probably be excited about, I'm excited about, Super Mario RPG is getting a remake uh so this is coming uh november 17th uh this is i think something people have been wanting for a really long time yeah and and we're getting it and we're getting it this year i love this game and i'm very excited that that they are doing a remake for this game and i'm even more excited because this potentially means possibly a sequel to this game (laughs) yeah i mean especially like if you're letting ubisoft do like the rts stuff with mario and that's gotten a sequel i don't see why this wouldn't be successful enough for Nintendo to be like, maybe we should do that some more. And I th- this looked great. Yep, it did. It looked phenomenal. It's probably going to run amazing on the Switch. And it's a another, like Owen was able to play Mario versus Mario Rabbids. Both the games um, play him pretty well. Um, but I think this is a phenomenal way to introduce him into turn base. Oh, yeah. No, this is <laughs> this is great. A fair amount of reading, uh, but it probably won't stop anybody. No. Uh, well, it won't stop a kid from playing this. Uh, and the art style does really translate pretty well. Uh, though Mario looks a little... I don't know. Something's slightly off about Mario. I don't know what it is. Like, everyone else's miniature version looks pretty good. Yeah, Mario. I think it's that this wasn't made by Nintendo, I believe. Um, uh, yeah, is... Uh, it's a, it was, at the time, is, I don't know who's even doing yeah. this, but the first oh, one... Oh, Square Enix, I think, did the original. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, you can uh, have but Mario, yeah. but you can only have, like, 87% of them. <laughs> yeah yeah uh, so this looks great i'm excited for this this is something that uh 
will probably be not a sleeper hit because none of Nintendo stuff is yeah. a sleeper hit, but this is one of those ones that like other games that we're planning for November are like, it, ah, son of a bitch. It, Nintendo's it, releasing it, I don't think it'll it can't win game of the year because it's a remake. But mm-hmm. this I feel like this game can and will dominate November social media conversations. Oh yeah, yeah, and it will make it into people's top tens. Yeah, you absolutely. know, like it won't get number one, but it's gonna knock out an Xbox or PlayStation like game from the top ten. If, if, is it twenty five years old? Twenty years old? It was on Super Nintendo, uh, so yeah, it was Super Nintendo, yeah. so it has to be. Yeah, yeah and I love one of Wario's and... tweets of it. Uh, pre-orders are live now for fifty nine ninety nine, or you can buy the Super Nintendo cartridge for a hundred dollars or something. Like that. Yeah, when when it, uh... <laughs> so I mean I. I really, really hope that it gets a sequel. I love there's there's things I feel like there's a couple things that they showed in the trailer that either I don't remember or I don't recall being in the game or they just look that much better. Mm-hmm. So, so this came out in '96. Okay. Uh, so yeah, it's been it's been a been a while. I don't want to do math, but <laughs> it's yeah, <all> good. <laughs> we're, we're approaching 30 years, uh, which is scary. Uh, so yeah, that's coming out. This looks great. This was probably the highlight of the show for me dave i don't know if you want to claim that as your highlight it's number two this was, so. it's number two yeah. okay well we'll get to potentially number one uh then we got a mysterious princess peach uh title that's coming in 2024 uh this uh is her first game since uh the ds super princess peach uh this looks like it gave me like puppeteer vibes it's a uh, peach mm-hmm. on a stage doing like a performance and the uh, the stage is constantly moving around and changing so it was like puppeteer and like some kirby epic yarn vibes yeah uh to this looks really good uh no release date on it it's just next year dave if yeah, yeah if you would a- speculate would you think that maybe the mario movie was so successful and a lot of people really were happy with peach that nintendo was just like let's do a peach game um i think there might have been something in development that maybe had a a vibe to it that was easy enough to change to her Mm -hmm. um or they were waiting to see like maybe to your point they were like okay we know the movie's coming out let's see i could easily see this also have been like a bowser centric game possibly because we haven't gotten one of those in a little while Mm -hmm. um so i think that maybe they possibly had you know two different versions of this game kind of in development like part a part b and one was bowser and one was peach and peach came out on the metrics came out in favor of peach yeah i someone at nintendo was like man people really like that jack black song like (laughs) let's just let's just build a whole game around peach because it's been a while yeah Uh, and i think that's good that they like expand outside of just you know like here's a mario game here's a luigi game you know like give peach uh, a vehicle uh and you know that'll be uh sometime next year and we'll see how that goes uh Here's one that, like, I should be excited about, but it did not look good, even though, like, they did say early in development. Uh, Luigi's Mansion 2. Uh, so this is an enhanced version of the 3DS game. This, as soon as they showed the trailer, like, there was definitely a quality drop in terms of, like, how it looked and also the frame rate of mm-hmm. this thing. And again, early in development sure but i don't think this had like the best showing to make anyone excited about it even though luigi mansion is great yeah i I think that i'm going to play it because i don't recall playing it on the the 3ds um i played the first one obviously and then and then even the second one or the the luigi's mansion 3 that came to switch right yeah it did um Mm -hmm. but so like this one's you know this is great i agree with you it looked a little it looked a little funky um maybe they just showed their hand too soon i don't know yeah or they just like here's literally the 3ds assets don't worry we're right. gonna remake this yeah. uh it just didn't have the best showing especially after showing super mario rpg showing a new peach game that looked pretty interesting and trying different things and then you showed this and it's just like okay that definitely looks like a 3ds port or straight up a 3ds game uh after that we got gloomhaven uh this is uh based off a board game it's coming september 18th um this has already been on pc i guess for a couple years now uh so this looked pretty good uh just one of those like greatest hits sort of things that come to the switch Mm -hmm. you know a couple years later uh we got just dance 2024 that's still kicking that's coming out october 24th 
And then we got a new uh, RPG called Silent Hope coming October 3rd. Uh, this one looked pretty cool. Dave, Dead any Hikery. specific thoughts? Uh, it just looked fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so just, just one yeah. of those That's very a- easy, very basic pickup games that doesn't look like it's trying to do too much, but it's just fun to play. Isn't that kind of funny, though? When we look at like the PlayStation stuff and the Xbox stuff, it's so hard not to think about like the business aspect of like the games that are being made, like why decisions were made. But when you come down to a Nintendo one, you just look at the trailers and it's just like, that just looks fun. Yeah. Like, you don't like, I don't know, like, I feel like you're kind of like that. And I'm that like that as well when it comes to Nintendo yeah, I, stuff. I don't care what a game looks like. I care about the, what the yeah. premise of the game is. And is it something I'm going to have fun playing? Yeah, but it's so much easier when you're watching Nintendo Direct to just be like, that looks fun, Mm -hmm. as opposed to, like, all the discourse that goes with Xbox and PlayStation of just, like, oh, that, you know, the frame rate, or, like, oh, why did they make that decision, or... Well, like, uh, I I don't know, just off the top of my head, just because, like, um, Lies of P, is that what it's called? Yeah. What genre of game is that? Souls. Right, but what does that mean? You know, like, so it's, like, versus... We saw less of this game, and we know exactly what it is. Yeah, like, and because of the type of game it is, <laughs> it's got a release date that it will hit, yeah. and that we're not going to be like talking like four times in the next couple weeks, being like, "Oh, yeah. delayed again, delayed again, delayed yeah. again." Uh, and it's stuff that just comes to Nintendo platforms. Yeah, sometimes it runs like shit. It's sometimes games aren't trying to do anything crazy, but it's just there's a different vibe with the direct that is just like. I don't know, it's always refreshing, especially coming out of Summer Games Fest, Xbox Showcase, PlayStation Showcase. As fun as those are, uh, some of this stuff is just it's kind of nice and relaxing. Right. Uh, we got another farming simulator, uh, Fay Farm, which I think we saw at Summer Games oh, yeah. Fest. Like too, yeah. yeah. Uh, but that is uh, offering local and online co-op coming September 8th. We got Hot Wheels Unleashed 2 Turbocharged. That's coming October 19th. Very quick turnaround time, but not surprising mm-hmm. for like a Hot Wheels game. Uh, Dave, I don't know if you remember how fast they were pumping out Hot Wheels games during mm-hmm. like the PS2 era. So, Oh, yeah. So. They have a formula with Unleashed, so it makes sense that they would just keep it going, keep it going. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got uh, Maniac Mechanic, a co-op title coming July 13th. Uh don't remember too much about this but it just it just looks like one of those like party type yeah. fun games those are fine those are great for social interaction at your house or something <laughs> yeah it's one of those games that you, you play maybe like once or twice when people are over and then you kind of just don't think about it uh, we got is this your favorite thing mario and rabbit sparks of hope the no uh the lost spark hunter okay uh, the third expansion uh, featuring Rayman is coming later this year. Fun fact, I forgot that Ubisoft gave us like the deluxe version of the game for, for review. Oh, so so just, I have yeah. this stuff, and Owen's like, yesterday, Owen was like, and I don't think it corresponded with the Direct, because Owen did watch all the Direct, and he's just like, was playing it, and he's like, hey, there's new stuff in here. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. that, that's funny. Um, all right, uh, we got Dragon Quest Monsters the Dark Prince dark prince uh dragon quest games this they just keep coming this is coming december 1st Mm -hmm. uh i don't know dragon quest games day for me like they kind of all are samey uh but i know they're all quality so there's like nothing really offensive about dragon quest it's a comfort food game for people like Mm -hmm. i know i can play it i know like what you're just talking about i know i can play it i know i'll have fun i know it'll come out and i'll feel valued like, mm-hmm. you'll enjoy it for those couple months and yeah. you'll be like when's the next one and the company's gonna be like don't worry mm-hmm. there's one coming soon uh then we got a, another look at pikmin 4 um we got the game coming july 21st and there's a demo coming next week uh june 29th was this your favorite thing? no <laughs> i'm trying to fucking predict what's your favorite one oh uh, yeah pikmin 4 looks great uh like i'm excited this is this is a good summer game. Mm-hmm. Like Pikmin Four, this is the right time. You, if they put this out in a holiday, it wouldn't yeah. do well, or it would do okay. Big deal about being a play at night in the game too. <laughs> I, isn't it? It's fucking Nintendo. Yeah. Like they get you excited yeah. over the most random things. And then though, like one and two combined is great. Yeah, one and two. Uh, one plus two is um available digitally. Mm-hmm. Uh, today or Shadow dropped uh that day of the direct 
And then a physical release is coming September 22nd. I'm probably going to wait for the physical release because I'm a weirdo. Yeah, but you turned your head. Like, I, I just refreshed my memory. What What's Pikmin 4's date? I'm sorry. August? August? Uh, July 21st. July 21st. So, in theory, like this is what's cool about what Nintendo's been doing. At, by the end of July, you can play all four Pikmin on the Switch. Yeah, because uh, Pikmin 3 did get ported to the Switch, right? Correct, yes. Of course, yeah. Yep. So now, yeah. all of a sudden, you can have, if you already own Pikmin 3, you buy Pikmin 1 and 2 now, and then Pikmin 4 comes out, and you have all four Pikmin games on your Switch, mm-hmm. on your most current-gen hardware, in a handheld form. Yep. And you're happy about it. Yeah. You know, even if you're double-dipping on 1 and 2, or in some cases, well, maybe for again, 1, like, triple-dipping. Again, Owen, he's 7 years old. He played 3. He really liked it. He, he You know, so now he can go back and play 1 and 2. If I want to get it, you know, and then Fork's coming. So it's just a great platform and ease for him to use. And he has the switch and he can just, he gets up in the morning. This kid, you know, still on school time, wakes up at like 6 a.m. <laughs> my, my wife is off for the summer. And she's like, leave me alone. <laughs> and then he just goes yeah. and gets the switch. <laughs> like, <laughs> he's going to have a very Pikmin summer. Yeah. <laughs> like, he's he's going to have a good summer. <laughs> and uh, again, Pikmin 4 is going to be a great summer game. You know, like, I don't know if, how it's going to review. Probably will review well, but people are going to play it. It's mm-hmm. going to be, it's probably going to perform better than it's ever performed because of how many switches are out there. Uh, and people will be talking about it, even if it's only for a couple weeks mm-hmm. uh, before, like. So, be another game that they average. sell six to eight million copies of, like. Yeah, probably. Yeah, mm-hmm. we'll probably get a press release being like Pik- Pikmin Four is the highest selling game, and then in the Pikmin franchise by November, December, it just won't be talked about. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, but Nintendo, they might end up when you look at like people's game of the year list for top tens, they might end up having like fifty percent entries yeah, this 50%. year. Fifty percent. It, it, it's kind of wild uh we got uh metal gear solid volume one collection coming to the switch uh it's metal gear one two and three and it's looks like it's doing like uh the whole library thing like mm-hmm. there's gonna be like concept art in it uh some commentary type stuff super weird because it's not associated with kojima so a lot of the work you're gonna be seeing is kojima's work uh but th- we'll see how he's mentioned mm-hmm. if at all uh, some of this look kind of rough, but they're old games, so I couldn't tell if it was a yeah. Switch or if it was the old games. Uh, but yeah, this is coming October 24th, and then they also said the games will be available individually uh, for those that just want one game. This is all games. over. Like, I mean, since um, since the PlayStation Showcase, where there was all this speculation about Metal Gear exclusivity with PlayStation, now this thing's coming to everything. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah, it's, co- it's coming to everything. Uh, and... I said it looked kind of rough, but I'll probably pick it up just because I I love you know two and three. So now, but you have a PC, you have an Xbox, you have a play, mm-hmm. you have a PS Five, and and you have a Switch. So are you picking this up on the Switch now? I might because especially when you look at the first game, it will just translate really well uh, to the Switch. Um, and depending on like how well they like emulate the games, there isn't going to be a big increase right. you know going to ps5 because we're talking about like old games that are you know just ported over uh so having it portable might be a little bit more fun a little easier to look at that, <laughs> that mm-hmm. 14 by 9 screen <laughs> yeah as opposed to putting it on my like 55 inch tv uh one game that i loved on pc and on xbox uh is coming to switch uh august 17th and that is vampire survivors Dave, I am so curious to see how this game runs on the Switch. That's the game that has uh, like a hundred things on the screen at the same time, right? Thousands <laughs> yeah. of things on the screen <laughs> at the same time. And it's a Why game that Why is my Switch auto... fan running like I was going to be a hoverboard? <laughs> yeah, and it's very pixelated, very simplistic yeah. art. So you, when you look at it in this trailer, it's just like, how is that going to like test the Switch? But believe me, you can power up your character to you know auto attack like 20 different things at the same time as thousands of enemies are surrounding you and even on my pc there's a couple times where i'm just like why are you struggling for a second <laughs> like not not like struggling bad but yeah. like you'll see like a little hitch and you're just like damn this, this is really making this work uh so i i want to see that on the switch it ran pretty well on xbox mm-hmm. um i would probably say i saw it hitch on the xbox uh and i didn't really see it happen on uh the pc so let me reverse that uh, the next thing, uh, Headbanger's Rhythm Royale. Uh, it's a 30-player rhythm game coming October 31st. Okay. Uh, just a <laughs> lot of stuff. 
Uh, we got Penny's Breakaway. Uh, this is from the team that made Sonic Mania. It's coming in 2024, mm -hmm. so there's some pedigree on that. We'll see how that goes. Uh, too soon to really talk about what that could be. Uh, but it's nice that it got like a nice little featured on the Direct. Uh, Mario Kart 8 is getting its uh, fifth wave of content. Uh, and it's also going to include some racers from Double Dash and Mario Kart DS. I think that was seven. So yeah, uh, shit, they're still still doing content uh, for Mario Kart. Uh, the next one is Star Ocean, the second story R. Uh, this is a uh, remake? Yeah, remake. Um, and it is coming November 2nd to PlayStation, PC, and the Switch. A lot of people are excited this, about this. So. No, it's not, no. Okay, okay. <laughs> uh then we got uh yeah this looked great uh this one i think leaked a day or two prior mm -hmm. that it was coming so people were really excited for that uh we got wario where move it uh this is coming november 3rd there are so many fucking switch games coming out from like now until the end of the year it makes you wonder what they have for next year easy christmas gifts for grandmas and grandpas and aunts and uncles yep. <laughs> so. yeah so this is another wario collection uh, so a bunch of micro games coming November 3rd and then Super Mario Brothers Wonder uh, was the, this, the last thing. This, this, this was a yes. favorite thing. Yeah. Another side-scrolling uh, 2D Mario game that can play multiple players on the screen at the same time. I have a blast yeah, playing four, these games. Four-player co-op. These are like, this is like the video game that my daughter will play. My 19 or 20-year-old mm -hmm, yeah. daughter now. Like, she'll play this. And, you know, she might, to your point, like you just said earlier, it might be one of those things where she plays, like, once every six months. But it's like, hey, we're all home on a Friday night, and it's raining outside or whatever. Like, let's let's play Wonder, you know. And This, this is the perfect, like, Thanksgiving yeah. game. We have, like, everybody in the house, and people are just hopping in casually. Yep. Uh, but, yeah, this is coming October 20th. So, you know, just packing uh this holiday season mm -hmm. uh nintendo another just uh, instant 10 to 15 million selling instantaneous <laughs> yeah yeah just just anything uh yeah uh so dave this was the direct i think this was a pretty good direct yeah. uh three like, or four things I, that it, i'm gonna play for sure so yeah and a lot of stuff that's coming this year and nintendo doesn't really delay things like maybe every once in a while they'll delay stuff yeah. You can say they delayed Zelda, but they were also very vague. <laughs> vague with some of their their windows. Uh but yeah, this is Nintendo just putting out like a solid direct what was it a day notice mm -hmm. on on the directs coming and then now this is like set people shopping. It's like it's like one of those year. things where it's like you go to like you're the the head of Nintendo Directs at Nintendo and then you go to your boss and say, "Can we do it now?" "No, we don't have this ready yet." "Can we do it now?" "No, this isn't ready yet." Okay, can we do it now? Yeah, yeah. Okay, just do it tomorrow. Huh? <laughs> yeah. So, so, so something I alluded to earlier, like, does this kind of feel like one of the last hurrahs for the Switch because of the amount of content they're packing into this? Mm. I kind it's, of feels it's getting like close. it. They, I think we're going to get another 3D Mario. Uh, like... The, and that's not going to launch on their next console? You think the Switch will get one more? Or mm. you think it'll be like a... I don't like they've know. done in the past. Yeah, they've done it with um like Twilight Princess. Zelda. Yeah, they've done it yeah. with some Zelda games. Um I do think that we're we're pretty close to another three D Mario. Um I usually when with in the past, Nintendo's done a much better job over the last couple of years with it, but usually in the past, when we knew a new console was coming, we would start seeing concept art of the console. Like we were all like we were looking at the Wii, wondering like like what the heck is that? you know like like what's mm -hmm. going on and we or we would see the controller and you know we like all this other stuff and we haven't seen any like we've heard rumblings about like a switch pro yeah but we haven't you know like i don't i don't think that like tears of the kingdom is being was held back by the hardware i don't no i mean outside of stability but I don't think. Do you really think idealized. that, like, like when they're in the room, they're they're fighting, and like, there's like somebody's like the main, you know, uh, director on Tears of the Kingdom, and they're like, you gotta hit 30 frames, and he goes, I can't because the so the hardware sucks. Like, I don't feel like that's a conversation in Nintendo's offices. I I think Nintendo at least has minimums. 
but like i don't think the zelda person could be like i don't think nintendo would be like we need 60 frames right. i think nintendo's just like just hit 30 mm-hmm. like that's what that's what the, the like, portable but, machine yeah like can but handle. to my point though is i feel like there was nothing um um there was nothing that stopped them like the, i don't feel like there was something they they couldn't put in tears of the kingdom because of the of the hardware limitation i don't think there's not something that obviously is mario rpg remake that there's like they can obviously make that look amazing and then super mario wonder looks fant- wonderful whatever it is looks fantastic um i don't feel like anybody is playing games or reviewing switch games over the last six to eight months and saying oh wow we really need a new nintendo i think a lot of people have been but they've been looking at tears of the kingdom sort of thing um or at least with some of the smaller games that are starting to like kind of show their Mm -hmm. their inability but that also you know you look at nintendo's games and you're like well that game's doing way more and isn't struggling like your hardware is Uh, but that could just be this nintendo just obviously supports nintendo a little bit but i also think that the you can't the user base like the starting to talk about another system could impact sales of these games like i'll just wait until the next switch comes out like why would i buy you know this princess peach game or why would i buy super mario brothers wonder if i can just wait another year and buy the better version of it um so when people are you know are sitting there like why are they still making ps4 games it's you know why is god of war ragnarok and horizon forbidden west on ps4 well look at the install base like switches install base is bigger (laughs) yeah and and that's why sometimes you could probably look at it of just like it doesn't affect them if a new console gets announced because the install base is so big that mm-hmm. people are just going to buy it anyways. Uh, and they still have some amazing things in their back pocket that they haven't shown yet. If the, we believe the rumors to be true that Metroid is done, no Metroid today or this this week. Yeah, well, yeah, the, nothing. Metroid Prime Four was announced two three years ago, yeah. and Metroid Prime Two apparently that remake is done and yeah. been done. Which is why I think that will probably be the last major thing released on a Switch. And then the next Mario game, like 3D Mario game, mm-hmm. will probably be yeah, on Yeah, you're probably right. Console. Metroid Metroid 4 or Prime 4 will probably be the cross-platform one. Hey, we're bringing it out on Switch, uh, and we're bringing it out on Switch Pro, and here's a special edition Switch Pro, like a Metroid-themed Switch Pro, mm-hmm. you know, or whatever it's going to be. Yeah. And that, I think that's why we just haven't heard anything about it, because there's a chance that they looked at Metroid Prime and are like, this actually does matter if it's on 60 frames. But do you think do you think that we're just going to get like a bigger screen and better better Joy-Cons and a better battery? And therefore, if, that gives them the more of the space they need to put a better processor in there? Like, do you think that's it's just going to be a Switch Plus? <laughs> that's the thing that it's hard to say like if this was playstation or xbox i would say 100 percent yes Mm -hmm. but this is nintendo and nintendo doesn't like to really do the same thing twice their consoles tend to be so you don't you you don't think this is going to be like a a a 3ds where we had special like where it could still play ds games but it could also play 3ds games like you don't think this is going to be like a switch pro that has that little like the cartridges have that little flag on them so they can't go on a regular switch that's the problem it's nintendo like nintendo has shown like hey we do backwards compatibility and also hey we don't Mm -hmm. like they nintendo's really hard to predict on this stuff to where i don't know if they're gonna want to play it safe and do just like switch pro and also i don't think there's like a worry about them just doing a switch pro from a consumer standpoint because i think the consumers for nintendo are just going to fucking buy whatever Nintendo puts out. Right, but wouldn't it just cut off? Like, Super Mario Wonders, we just talked about, it's going to sell 10 or 15 million copies. Like, wouldn't that, in a year, if this next Switch comes out, wouldn't that cut off that install base? No, because Nintendo was like, don't worry, we're going to resell you Super Mario Wonders in, like, three years, and you're going to eat that shit up. Yeah. So. Uh, like, Nintendo's really hard to predict on this stuff, because they 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 play by completely different rules uh, than how playstation or xbox handle things like they get away with certain things and they also are allowed to do certain things just because they just they're consistent uh you know it's like um i don't know like in sports when like you hear about star players get away with more fouls we just really we we really haven't even seen any kind of even small price drop on the switches and usually you start seeing a price drop when they're thinking about new hardware because they want to get as much of the old hardware out as possible so like the old nintendo mantra of what they would be doing with little little leaked pieces of 
you know, of artwork or whatever and price dropping or increase in bundles aren't there yet. I'm not saying that this this is it's a whole different world now because of how long it's been within the pandemic changed everything and I get all that, but just to par for the course of what Nintendo has done prior with the Wii and the even the crappy Wii U and you know, like we're not seeing like all that the only the most recent bundle thing has been the Tears of the Kingdom one. Before that it was Monster Hunter? Maybe? Yeah. I, it, it, it's funny when it comes to, like, Nintendo. is like, you know, they, they already know what they're going to do for the next one. They probably already have everything ready to go for the factories. And every time they're ready to pull that, that trigger, they're like, oh, we just sold, like, 5 million Switches last month. And they're like, okay, 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 let's let's stop now. And let's see how many we sell next month. Yeah. And it continues and to sell. And all it, these games you just mentioned coming out, September, October, November, December, it's just going to increase hardware sales. Yeah. And, and and the funny thing is with Nintendo is for the most part, like they always release hardware that's always a couple years behind because it gets cheaper. So Nintendo is probably looking at their next system like, oh, we could delay it a year and guess what? The parts are just gonna get even cheaper. You know, mm-hmm. like it's not a big deal for them if they just keep dragging the switch along. Go break the glass on Wind Waker HD for Switch and we'll wait another year. <laughs> <laughs> no and it's, it's exactly how it feels like it goes because they just they pocket like all of these games and they're just like waiting uh to release it and then it's the break glass you know situation or, he like, or they like i said the guy comes up can we do the direct yeah let me find another game to launch hang on oh here's mario rpg remake put that in there <laughs> like he yeah, just I reaches just imagine... in his box like he's just blindly reaching in there and like yeah. like what the hope is that metroid 4 comes out and it doesn't <laughs> so... I, d- I just imagine like the president of nintendo japan just like leaves his office and then just shouts over all the cubicles like who's do- who's got something i can show tomorrow <laughs> and then like 10 people stand up like oh actually this has been done uh yeah uh but yeah nintendo pretty damn good showing mm. uh <sighs> If we're going to compare them to Xbox and PlayStation, I think they did a better job than both of them, mm-hmm. to be honest. I mean, Nothing they, they have like... the ultimate trump cards. They have Mario. Mm-hmm. They have Link. I mean, they have Mario. They have Zelda. They have Pikmin. They have, they have huge marquee franchises that everybody knows what they are. And in in even when they, somebody just walks by, like if my dad would just walk by the TV while the Nintendo Direct's on, he would see something he would recognize. Yeah. <laughs> so... and, and, and when it comes to Nintendo, it like especially with this Direct... I wouldn't think they had any like major like announcements compared to the other companies, but they basically did death by thousand cuts, you know, like they, 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 they just hit you with a bunch of stuff at once. Nothing, you know, as spectacular as like tears of the kingdom, Spider-Man Two, Starfield, but they did enough of the other smaller games that it's just like they put together a solid show. Uh, so yeah, uh, that was uh, the Nintendo Direct. All right, Dave, get ready, buckle up. <laughs> um, this isn't even as thorough as I could have made it because I know. there's a lot of information coming out. <sighs> uh, it, it's time for Xbox Activision acquisition update. Uh, I don't think that's coming through, Dave. Dave's hitting his microphone. <laughs> um, your 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 noise gates too. Yeah, big. I know. <laughs> uh, so Xbox Activision, uh, boring. They're, <laughs> they're doing ftc stuff right now they are currently in court doing like preliminary hearings uh and we got some little bit of info coming out of those uh it sounds like the it's just coming out of playstation versus xbox like they the the politicians are zeroing in on the playstation uh portion uh there's like documents out there from the xbox side that do say like hey we're doing this to destroy playstation uh and it's just like yeah that's like, that's business? their job as a business is to put yeah. is to hurt their competition that's their job yeah. and, and, and and it's getting blown out of proportion of like they're actively trying to sabotage them it's just like yeah kind, kind of hey so is sony yeah <laughs> it's like i'm pretty sure mcdonald's isn't trying to help burger king yeah like so yeah um but in the meetings xbox is on record saying like they have lost the console war and they are never going to win that back which is on par with what spencer said it kind of funny yep yep um jim ryan uh in a deposition said that sony will withhold ps6 information from activision 
if Microsoft if Microsoft acquires them, uh, previously PlayStation would reach out to Call of Duty makers to be like, hey, what features do you want in our new console? Also, can you look at our hardware, see how it goes? Uh, and Jim Ryan is like, we won't be doing that with Activision anymore if the deal goes through. But Call of Duty on my platform is still important. Yes, exactly. Uh, and you this can't is one of those have ones. Your cake and eat it too. It, 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 this is baffling because it's one of those things where it's like Microsoft is willing to put Call of Duty on your platform, and this sounds like self sabotage of mm-hmm. just like whoa. Micro- the, Microsoft it, is like, look, we have a tentative deal if this if this if this acquisition goes through. Of we have a a contract that we've offered Sony for Call of Duty for the next ten years. Like and it's it, here, it's it, here. We showed it to them. They said no, and now PlayStation or Sony is saying we're not going to give you access to the new hardware to make the game but we want the game on our hardware but we're not going to give you access to it yeah and your deal says it needs to be on par with the other platforms we're going to make that as hard as possible Mm -hmm. but at the same time jim ryan has a point why would he share some of that information with the competitors and that's where it gets kind of sticky to where it's you can see both sides in terms of just like yes you wouldn't want to show your competitor the hardware but also they act like there's like actual company secrets. Every company knows what the other company's doing through many different ways because they usually talk to the same factories mm-hmm. to produce this stuff. But so, you don't think that Bungie's going to have something to say about this? When they when Sony wants their games on Xbox because of games as a service and Bungie's going to be like, hey, we need access to Xbox's dev kits and Xbox is like, sure, give us access to your dev kits to make Call of Duty. <laughs> you know it, it, you're gonna have scenarios like that yeah. you know when we get to some what about it. mlb the show i mean hell microsoft could be super petty and being like oh we're gonna do a windows update that's gonna fuck your next pc port <laughs> like like i i get it like but this is the problem uh you know this is like now this is a hardware company that produces software and you want y- y- and you want their software like, yeah, I understand that Call of Duty is super, super important to your platform, uh, Jim, Jim Ryan. But I don't know what would happen if this deal doesn't. Let's just say this deal doesn't go through, which it will go through. I'm telling you right now, this deal is going to go through. But if it doesn't go through, what becomes of Activision and Blizzard? Like, they like it's obvious. I don't think that. Yeah, they get a like three billion. Or what is it? Twenty billion. Three billion three, break up. Three, three billion, billion breakup yeah. fee by July eighteenth, and then I think it grows bigger if they extend. Right. It. So, but that's not enough to sustain Activision and Blizzard. Like the stock price would plummet so far with just the news of the, that the merger didn't go through that they would probably be forced to sell off assets. And then what happens to Call of Duty? Like, who would buy Call of Duty? So, what you're going to stop Activision from buying Call of Duty? I'm sorry, you're going to stop Xbox from buying Call of Duty just by itself? Because they're the ones that have the cash because they just saved a bunch of cash by the merger not going through. Like, Sony's not going to buy them. You know what happens is the deal doesn't go through and Activision signs a marketing deal with Xbox. So content comes to Xbox first. (laughs) And then you go down the path of this like, oh, you know what? Our next Activision game, it's exclusive to Xbox because they signed a deal like you signed with Square Enix for Final Fantasy we, we That game gets played. And then at that point... Or Tencent ends up owning Activision. Yeah, but I think Microsoft and Activision would be petty enough to just be like, oh, you know what? We're just going to sign an exclusive deal with Xbox, uh, and you can't complain about that because uh, Final Fantasy XVI is exclusive to PlayStation. So uh, this next game from a- Activision, it's exclusive to PlayStation. Oh, or Xbox, it's exclusive to Xbox. Oh, also, content's coming to Xbox first because mm-hmm. you didn't have a problem doing that we call a duty playstation so we're doing it now Mm -hmm. like you're gonna get down to petty thing especially you're talking about like i don't know dave uh bobby kotick seems like a very small man uh he seems like he would be very petty in how things go well i think he'd be a hell of a lot more petty if he just loses a bunch of billion dollars out of his wallet so just get ripped right out of his wallet (laughs) especially that asshole is like this deal goes through and he gets to avoid all the litigation bullshit that he's currently in yeah that deal doesn't go through he's got to deal with that shit Mm -hmm. and figure that out which means he's just gonna just probably be petty of just like you know what i had to sign exclusive deals with xbox because we needed the funds and we needed this and needed that uh and it's it's gonna be messy um but we'll move on from that aspect of it uh it came out today though that indiana jones is exclusive 
So during the court hearing, it basically came out of like Bethesda. I think it was Pete Hines that was talking uh, with them. And the questions were basically like when Indiana Jones deal was signed with Disney, was it for a multi-console agreement? And Pete Hines was said yes. And then they're like, Duh. okay. Yeah. And when you signed with Xbox, what happened? It was basically like Microsoft renegotiated the deal to make it Xbox exclusive. So Microsoft went to Disney and said, what do we got to do? And Disney accepted it. That's not Microsoft's fault. That's Disney's fault. Yeah. Because Disney could have said no. Disney Correct. could have at any point been like, no, actually, we want it to be in as many. And, and it came out today, like Outer World 2? Outer mm-hmm. Wild? Worlds. Uh, yeah, Outer Worlds 2. There has been no decision made on that game if it's going to be multi-platform or not yet. Yeah, if this deal doesn't go through, then Xbox isn't like, we got to, we got to we got to take advantage of Correct. all the Bethesda stuff we we have. Yeah. I saw something today. I don't know who tweeted it or who said it, but Call of Duty being on uh, Xbox owning Activision and Call of Duty being on PlayStation is good for business. Starfield being on PlayStation or Starfield, I'm sorry, Starfield exclusively on Xbox is good for Xbox business. Call of Duty on PlayStation is good for Xbox business. Um, you know, like there's we I don't think and I was talking to Angela about this, and I could be wrong, and I think you might correct me if I'm wrong or not, but I don't think that we've seen a game announced with a trailer or an image on screen that said Bethesda, whatever, um, coming to PlayStation, Xbox, PC, Steam, and then that game has turned exclusive. Like, they've removed those logos from the screen. I don't think that we've seen that yet, because we didn't know Redfall existed until after the purchase. Yeah. Elder Scrolls was just a teaser trailer because right. there was no PS5 yet, so they couldn't announce Correct. platforms. And the last the most recent Elder Scrolls update, Elder Scrolls online update has come to PlayStation. So they they've yeah. they've Starfield, continued. I think they said it's coming to next gen consoles, but yeah. that's vague enough yeah. that like you could get away with. And and yeah, the rumor and the rumors right. are Sony was going after Bethesda for exclusivity of Starfield anyways. Like yeah. that was in negotiation at the time before the purchase happened. So currently as of now the, either the games have been announced that they're in development after the Bethesda merger purchase, I'm sorry, or the things that were announced prior to that have come to other platforms. So they haven't taken anything away yet. Publicly. Correct. Publicly. Which is all that matters. They, yeah, yeah, because we're only finding out about the Indiana Redfall. Jones game. We didn't hasn't. I don't even think has been announced. Or what we were like wanted like last year. Teaser trailer. Yeah, the, 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 the crack of the whip and and yeah. and. So you knew it was in Indiana, but that was after the purchase. Yeah, not too long after the purchase. Right. Eh, might have been around the same time. I forget if it was like a couple weeks before or a couple weeks after. Uh, but yeah, no, it's um, nothing publicly has you know come out um, or nothing publicly announced. And, and stuff anybody that's, that's surprised that like Redfall was in development for PlayStation and um, this Indiana Jones game was was or wasn't in development for PlayStation. It, like, yeah, of course it was until you got owned by Xbox. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's. It, I I just I I don't understand it. It's like you know if 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 all of a sudden Chevy became the top manufacturer of rubber for tires and Ford came to them and said that's bullshit that you can make our tires. Like, okay, what are you gonna do about it? Like, do you want the tires yeah. or not? Like. <laughs> So I, I just – I don't get this and all this stuff is doing of seeing stuff that – to be honest with you, we're seeing stuff that we are reading stuff like Tom Warren and all these other people that are tweeting stuff all day today. This is stuff that the public should not know about at all. <laughs> we, because it's a lot of like what could have been sort of scenarios and we're hearing about stuff that like are like I just figments of ideas in certain cases, you know, like – I don't believe Indiana Jones is being worked on, period, on any platform. Mm -hmm. The idea, on paper, it might have been like, hey, it's coming to every platform, but I don't think development had started when they announced that game. Like, so the idea that it's like, oh, this was coming to PlayStation, it's like, on paper, probably. Well, and and you look at Bungie, and you look at, they just announced Marathon, and they were very clear, like, Marathon's coming to multi-platforms. And we heard in the, the in the, the documentation and during the purchase, or mer- that one I actually want to call a merger, because that's what, the, like, so PlayStation's been calling it, is, is a merger. Um, yeah. Like, they're, they're standing on their multi-platform thing. Like, 
Why did Bethesda say yes? Why did Activision say yes? Because they need the they need the foundation from the from what Xbox offers. And if those things aren't there, like Starfield would have been a buggy ass mess last year. Last year. Yeah. Like it's it's I don't I just I just don't understand and I don't want to hear about Jim Ryan just crying. Like, okay, well fine, you don't get access to the dev kit. It's like two angry people that are fighting with each other and one, you know, says the thing that annoys the other one and you get a snap reaction. <laughs> yeah, and and then uh you know, like both sides are trying to stay professional and then you have Activision like uh, you know, in the middle of this just waiting and plotting their next move. Uh and- Jim Ryan went to Europe for these trials and he sent a video in for a 4-hour flight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh they're man i don't this is gonna be wild because jim ryan went to the cma trials correct in europe yes yes uh, and i'm assuming this ftc thing is taking place in dc uh san francisco i believe is where it's starting the 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 trials are in san or the the litigations in san francisco uh last thing i read was yes and he's and and he's too lazy to drive 10 blocks down the street and go (laughs) And that's if he's working out of, I, I wonder if he's working out of SEA office or the SEE office, but yeah, no, like they definitely have a headquarters in <laughs> San Mateo, I think San Francisco. Send your bitch. Yeah. <laughs> like, so <laughs> yeah, I, I'm assuming at one point Jim Ryan will have to go in person because like this is going to get dragged along and it's, if they, if PlayStation wants to win it, they're probably gonna have to send more than lawyers just because you kind of need to have people in rooms in certain situations to like win over. Uh, but that also could just be a strategy of just like, do we want some him of the, in the same room as yeah, Phil Spencer? Some of the questions they were asking, like that the, the FTC committee was asking about, like, well, we don't think it's fair that you can get a skin in Xbox you can't get in PlayStation. And PlayStation's like, yeah, we agree while they're sitting on Hogwarts Legacy stuff and, you know, Fortnite yeah. exclusivity stuff. And, like, you... <laughs> <laughs> I just no, and that's the thing that's look the, the, terrible. And then and it, the people asking questions look worse because I saw something about oh, you need a Windows key to stream games, and she, Sarah Bowie's like, no. <laughs> like, yeah, and and that's the problem is you have people that are just like completely out of touch that are in this, and both sides are taking advantage of that. Yeah. Like, don't don't think that like both sides aren't taking advantage of the fact that they have people that are just super out of touch and have no idea what the fuck. Any of this we have means. the same game on both platforms, but you can get the blue shirt on Xbox and only a green shirt on PlayStation. Like, and they, so they get the the qu- person asking the question, like, "Why can't my son get the blue shirt on PlayStation?" Like, <laughs> yeah, no, you're getting a bunch of that stuff. Uh, but let's give Xbox some shit. Yeah, um, they are raising prices for the Series X outside of the U.S. Uh, to basically match the price increase that PlayStation did outside the U.S. Um, and then also Game Pass globally is going to see a price increase. Uh, Game Pass regular is going to see $1 increase. Game Pass Ultimate, $2 increase. Game Pass on PC is going to remain the same price. Uh, basically, they're just saying inflation, price of cost. Um, Dave, I don't know if I want to give them complete shit because this kind of, that Series X one just makes sense because PlayStation raised their price. So mm-hmm. why wouldn't they raise their price too? Uh, I should mention the Series S will stay the same price, which shows you which one is probably selling uh and they don't want to fuck with that mm-hmm. well and they uh, just announced another version of it and a price yeah, <laughs> yeah. and then um uh, when it comes to game pass um phil spencer said like the game pass price won't hold forever but i want to give him shit because it's probably the wrong time to raise the price when you're in the middle of a trial yeah and you're trying to be like hey we're gonna be fair to the gamers and all that stuff and don't worry we're not gonna like raise prices or anything manipulative and then they raise the dollar two dollars I knew game price prices were going to go up no matter what eventually, but bad timing, dude. Like, yeah, bad bad timing. timing, but not a terrible price increase. I mean, like, no, I, not terrible. It's not going to stop. Not, not not, I don't one. think it's going to make anybody cancel their subscription. I don't think anybody's going to cancel their subscription because of two dollars a month. Um, that was Starfield coming out, right? Uh, so I think you know, in terms of bad timing for publicly doing it, smart timing before you have a huge game come out, like you know, just to get people kind of ready for it, versus announcing this like September first, like that would have been even like worse with Starfield coming out like September eighth or something like that. Um, I-, I saw a bunch of stuff again when this came out on social media about comparing it to PS Plus uh, sent like premium and how Plus Premium is so much of a better thing. It's not like they- there's some really great catalogs on there on the PS Plus Premium. Um, there's some fantastic things on it. It is not even, it cannot even hold a candle to game pass because of release date games. Like. Yeah. Uh, and 
so it, I noticed that discussion comes up every time PlayStation Plus has like a really good month of mm-hmm. like content coming to it. Uh, but because like this pre this month that just started or how, I, I forget how they release content like in the middle yeah. of the month. It was a really good update, but I also still feel like the service. Well, this is, is like still the one year anniversary. Yeah, that's why they're the doing service it, yeah. is still young young enough that it's still catching up. So it's gonna have some really good fucking months, mm-hmm. you know. Just like this month for Game Pass was really good, but the last couple months for Game Pass Correct. have been kind of yep. eh. Uh, so th- this this kind of just happens. Uh, but I I just think it's this funny timing, kind of bad timing. Or or the people that are like part. you know talking about P- uh, PS Plus are like, oh look, we're getting like TMNT Shredder Revenge. Like yeah, that was on Game Pass for a year. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, it was a day one. Yeah. Uh, so and, un- and until it's only they come continue. to plus because DLC is coming. Correct. <laughs> like, yeah, so until they can really like, I'm sorry, like I, 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 people hate. I know I see it all the time. Like, hate me talking about subscriptions. They hate me talking about Game Pass. But when you bring out a seventy dollar game that is going to be a game of the year contender, and you can play the seventy dollar game for seventeen dollars a month, and four hundred other games, mm-hmm. like, I'm sorry. Like, it should be it, honestly Game Pass Ultimate should be probably nineteen ninety nine a month. It's what it should be, and it's not there yet. It's probably what it's going to be. Right. Uh, it will happen if the Activision deal. I think, the- in my mind, like eventually in the next two to three years, like twenty five dollars will probably be the cap where I really start thinking about Game Pass Ultimate. Twenty five dollars a month. Yeah, that would be prime. Twenty would probably be the time where I'd like cancel it, and then just resub mm-hmm. for one month at a time when like big releases come. Uh, but yeah, it it's gonna get up there eventually. Uh, but yeah, that is it for the news. Dave, you want to hit us with what's delayed? Immortals of Avium has been delayed a month. Uh, I don't like this at all, partially because, you know, biasness. I was super excited for this game. It was something that I was happy that was announced in like April and coming in July. And then now we just found out about this last week and I have like a 90 day policy and they're almost like in the 30 day policy. (laughs) Like, so... I, yes, I want the game to be as great of an experience as it possibly can be because I want to see, you know, stuff. I want to see more creativity from EA. I want to see all that stuff. Um, but I don't think... I think July was the perfect time for this game, and now it is right up against Starfield. Like, right up against Starfield. And that sucks for this game. Yep. So. All right. Uh, what we're playing and watching. So, quickly... Um, I'll go over it. Uh, there was a, I had a bunch of conversations on Discord and, and Facebook group as well, but my, my ROG ally, Rogue ally, uh, came in, my, which is a handheld Windows PC. $600, $700, I can't remember. So $699, I think. Um, this thing, I'm, I'm, I'm very impressed with it. Battery life is terrible. <laughs> um, as, and, and that was already known. Like, I think it can go like two hours tops <laughs> on any, on the lowest settings. Um, setup was to be as expected. Um, I think it corresponded with some rough Wi-Fi connections in my house at the same time, ironically. Um, but it's got a, I should have brought it down with me and I didn't, but it's got a, a, a launcher, like a game launcher that you can sync up with, um, Ubisoft and Epic and, uh, Steam, Xbox Game Pass. It's, it's all Windows based. So you get it and you had to do the Windows updates like four times and it had to reboot every time. (laughs) Um, and then you want to do the game launcher updates and then you got to do the graphics card update. <laughs> so in terms of like setup process, it was probably at least three or four hours. Um, I know you laughed at me on discord when I said, I wish there would have been some type of ethernet port. I don't know where it would have gone. I agree. Yeah, with, yeah. I, I agree with you, but something of like, you know, like somehow to speed this process up, this setup process up. I, I told you, you, you could get a USB yeah. dongle and you can probably... But then you can't charge it at the same time because there's one USB-C port on this. <laughs> to, to, to hope it, the, the battery lasts longer yeah. than uh, the um, download. So it, it was just frustrating. It might have been some connectivity to Steam, like I said, at home as well. Um, I did play a little bit of Destiny on it. Um, there has also been a couple of firmware updates from it. I know some people were curious about that. Um Destiny, if I believe if everything was reading right correctly, was running about 45 to 60 frames per second on like some of my lowest settings, um, and it, it 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 was fine on a 700 a 720p screen. It was great. Um, once I got everything synced up, um, the games just they're there. They download. Um, I played. I went back and kind of was playing some more Darksiders Genesis. 
Um, I downloaded Ravenlock on it. Um, I've downloaded, uh, thanks to Brandon on Discord, uh, the two Guacamelee games are free on the Epic Store. Um, there's a handful of stuff that I was claiming on Epic Store like last year that was free um, that I kind of had forgotten <laughs> that I had. Um, and I've been looking at some other uh, some other PC games. I, I don't know of anything currently. I need to probably just go through Game Pass and find something um, that can just really push the hardware, like really push mm-hmm. the hardware. Um, but it does have easy adjustable wattage settings like 15 20 30 watt settings where you can adjust like how much power it's using you can manipulate the frame rate you can adjust the screen brightness all on the fly um and you know in terms of weight it 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 works really well it holds really well it's comfortable um and it it moves well there's a ton of customization with rgb on the front rgb on the back um i'm still trying to figure out some of like the screen saving settings because i'm kind of like worried about like is it on is it off is the screen gonna get burned out like in terms of like with with stuff like that but this is truly just a, a handheld Windows device, mm-hmm. like, and it's. I'm very impressed with it so far. Um, I really, like I said, I need to find something to really push the settings on it. I've been thinking about Diablo Four. I've been seeing a lot of people playing Diablo Four on it, um, and it seems like it's super interesting. But if I picked up Diablo, um, I probably wouldn't be until after like mid July after my store is open because I w- I'm going to have a, a ten or fourteen day run of chaos at work finally. Um, and then I'm also very concerned of like I've been paying attention to a little bit of Diablo stuff and the way I need somebody to explain it to me like I'm five years old but like every season starts new progression so I'm having a really hard time understanding what that does or doesn't mean I know there's new characters coming every season or a new character coming every season which is great um, but I don't know if I'm ready to dedicate some time to a game that allegedly may or may not respect my time correctly uh, it should uh, but that that's a whole other thing to get into <laughs> once you have time yeah uh, to go through it so um yeah for the most part that's kind of like i've just been messing with the rog uh with the with the alley uh on and off um i do there's a couple games codes that you've sent me uh starship um troopers, troopers uh yeah. extinct extraction yeah extinction? So i need to check that out uh that's downloaded on there um, yeah, I was curious about that one because it's in early access, so I wonder how yeah. early access uh, runs. Yeah, just haven't really, you know, haven't really had a chance. I do want to test it as an example. Like, I want to take it to work one day and test it off like it works Wi-Fi, um, you know, just to see. Because, I mean, I have some pretty good internet at home, and I think we might be switching to fiber here pretty soon. But um, I, regardless, I have some pretty good internet at home, so I'd be curious to, like, how it would handle, like, work internet and stuff. So, uh, For me, Dave, I am playing Diablo 4 uh so me and sarah ended up picking it up we're playing it pretty much exclusively couch co-op uh because it does support that uh for two players uh so we've been doing that a lot um i think we're like level 60 and we're pretty much just doing random missions as they come through uh it does kind of have like some mmo vibes uh because when you're in the, the the world uh, the map you will see other players going through the towns and then there also are like instances and events that are happening um, and those could be anything from like oh here's a circle where a bunch of people are just fighting some uh, like NPCs or protecting some NPCs uh, and then there's also instances where they're like the full on like you know hey here's an event happening on the map right now as many of you want to join and battle the bosses here you can go do that that's super chaotic because I don't know how many people are in your instance at one time, but man, when you run to those events, there is a ton of people. Uh, and I notice every time like we get close to it, the frame rate will skip a little because I think it's loading you into an instance that can handle all those people. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's pretty seamless once you're in there and you're fighting. Uh, but it's a Diablo game. It's a dungeon crawler. It's a hardcore RPG with you know crazy skill trees and the amount of things that you can adds your character and adjust to your character uh it still has the ability to reset your character whenever you want in terms of like any skill points you spent mm-hmm. uh which has definitely been something that we've done a couple times because you you get to a certain point in the game and you're like ah you know what i really should have built my character differently so you just reset it and then re uh, you know put your stats where you want them uh so that's been super helpful uh one thing I do like, we're doing couch co-op, but our friends can still join us. So it doesn't lock you out of like online multiplayer when you are playing couch co-op. Uh, so there's been a couple times where friends have just kind of joined in casually as we're playing. Uh, and that usually is what leads to like 
us resetting our stat abilities because we you know play with someone who might have our character and we're just like you're both healers oh (laughs) yeah or or you know like oh i really like the way you built out this character well i'm gonna copy how you built out this character and like re you know reconfigure my stats uh for the most part uh the story is interesting like you're trying to basically fight uh the daughter of hatred lilith uh it's just like hardcore you know demon stuff you know it's pretty run-of-the-mill uh it, it is funny though uh the story can just you can pick up different acts at the same time mm. so when we first got in online with one of our friends they're like oh what act are you in and we were like oh we think we're in like act two or three because the last quest we did was an act three quest and then he's like oh so that means you did this and we're like what are you talking about Mm -hmm. he's like no no no. if you're in act three then you have had to have done the thing i'm talking about uh and that's when we find out that like you can literally pick act one two or three quests at any point in the thing Mm -hmm. and run them simultaneously uh and for the most part it really doesn't affect like how the story plays out so it's like a fine balance of like if you do pick up an act three thing it's not going to confuse you when you like pick up an act one or two thing uh so still still balancing that out we're just really addicted to just running around the map doing random dungeons and just leveling up and getting new gear uh the the glamour system the wardrobe system is pretty good to where uh you can keep getting new gear that builds your stats out but you can disguise them to be like the gear that you want it to look like um uh, which is a pretty common like mmo thing uh so this is probably close to me enjoying an mmo as you can get uh without actually playing an mmo uh so we're just really addicted to just getting the best gear possible uh we were spending a little too much time in world state one so there's different world states that are more difficult but also have better loot drops world world tiers right yeah yeah world tiers um they call them i think i think they're states in uh, in diablo uh but uh we spent a little too much time in the first world tier uh and our friends like just just jump to two like even if you haven't really played a diablo game before just just jump to two you'll get better gear so we're working our way up there so we're, we're on two right now and we're already eyeing three uh because our friend who's currently there is saying the gear is even better so we're kind of on that that trail of just like there's always better gear around every mm-hmm. corner. Uh, so enjoying that. It's just kind of been our, we had a couple of weekend plans fall through. Uh, and it was one of those instances where like plans fell through on Saturday and we're like, Oh damn, that means we're gonna have to play Diablo all day. <laughs> and then Sunday plans fell through and it's like, ah, oh, damn, we're gonna have to play Diablo. And then we were off Monday. So yeah, if, this ke- if it keeps up with our community, I think that we'll just make a Diablo channel in discord. Um, I was going to ask you as well, like with your friends dropping in and out, like have you, do you guys use Discord? Like are you connected on Discord through PlayStation? Or, and you guys like join uh, the voice so chat? Or I don't know if we've time, talked about you using Discord with PlayStation at all. So Yeah, uh, t- the only problem we had is the PlayStation was doing the stupid thing where it was sending a voice chat through the uh, headphones because we're playing couch co-op. Yeah. Uh, it changes things because we can't use a headset. Mm-hmm. Like both of us can't use a headset. Uh, so we were having issues where audio was coming through the controller, which isn't g- a good situation at all. So and we got too, an- I got too annoyed trying to fiddle with everything to figure out like, how can I get the fucking audio to go through my damn sound bar, but also use the microphone on a controller. I think you just probably uh, just need to prop a tablet up or the phone right in front of the, on the, on the, on the, that, that's what we did. Yeah. Did, that I basically just turned my phone discord on and then yeah. just did that. Okay. Uh, cause, cause it just, it was just easier. Like it drained my battery fast as hell, but I was just like, this is so much simpler. Uh, Cause I hate that by default audio comes out of the controller. Yeah. It's stupid. Uh, so yeah, a lot of Diablo four. Um, then um, I'll talk about just a little bit. Uh, I basically did the whole pitch for the game a couple weeks ago, uh, but convergence, a league, the league of Legends story uh, finished it. That was about like 16 hours. I think, Uh, um, I think they advertise it as like a 10 ish, 10, 15 hour sort of game, but my play count said 16 or whatever. Uh, so that, uh, if you don't know is a league of legends, side scrolling Metroidvania. 
uh, that plays around with time and just it's just a really good game. Like, again, a couple weeks ago, I think it's been like what, like three. We've had like four episodes in like three weeks, so it's hard to think mm-hmm. about. But a couple weeks ago, I made the pitch for it, but I didn't say I didn't want to like say if it was a full recommendation until I beat it. Uh, but I do think this is a full recommendation. It is worth picking up. I know Dave's been looking at it. It's on uh, sale for like twenty four bucks right now too, at yeah, least on, on uh, PC. The, so this is a Metroidvania, and it's a really good one. Mm-hmm. Uh, the traversal stuff is pretty damn fun. There is a ton of different ways to move around the maps, different things that are locked out to you until you find new ways to traverse the map. Uh, and it's just a really entertaining story. It's a pretty light experience. Again, it like took me like sixteen hours, and. Even if you're not into League of Legends, I think there's still an entertaining enough story. Is this going to be the gateway drug for you to dive into League of Legends? For most people, I would say no. But if Riot continues to make and partner with studios to make side League of Legends stories, this could be your gateway drug into Mm -hmm. that. Like, if you play this, you're going to be like, oh, you know what? Let me see the Arcane TV show on Netflix oh, do they have any more of these side stories Mm -hmm. of League of Legends? And you probably are going to be more inclined to check that stuff out more than jump into like the main League of Legends bread and butter of Riot Games. Uh, But I think it is a good Metroidvania. It's one of those things where it works really well on the Switch. There was some times where it was like, "Eh, I struggle, but that happens on the Switch, unfortunately, especially when you're playing handheld. Mm -hmm. Uh, But in terms of like, other platforms probably handle this no problem. I'm sure your 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 handheld PC <laughs> will probably be able to handle this uh, if the Switch was like good for yeah. 85% well, of the experience. That's the thing that I've realized that I'm really going to enjoy about the, the Ally is that truly now, like, PC will be my primary platform because now I can play it on my decent, above average um, gaming PC and I can play it on my Ally. Um mm-hmm. You know, and the ally. I understand it's like it's like seven hundred bucks, but it's it's pretty powerful. And I haven't even messed with it like in dock mode or anything like that. But like, I've, well, especially go ahead. Especially if you're you know like you're fine with how the switch performs. Yeah. Like if you're fine with how the switch performs, the the rog or whatever the ally is so much better than a switch. Mm-hmm. You know, in terms of power. So it's like okay, you're you're. If most of your complaints from the switch is sometimes it gets choppy, then the thing you're using the ally is going to be fucking like i haven't i haven't checked out in dock mode yet i know there's like a plug i can buy for it that i plug it into the into this adapter and then there's an hdmi cable that comes out of it and you plug into your tv i haven't tried that yet i haven't i haven't tried connecting any headphones to it yet i haven't tried connecting any um individual bluetooth controllers to it yet um and this could be potentially a a, a great early access or early or pc entry point for a lot of people um just it's like you could just pick this up and it works um and you don't really need to worry about it being steam deck verified um because of it being a window based system as well as like everybody's like oh well it doesn't run destiny that great well i have to be connected to the internet to play destiny anyways so if i have to be connected to the internet to play destiny anyways i'll either just play it on my tv or i'll play it on my pc like you know like but a game like this or a game like dark siders genesis or ravenlock um of where you know, like I could just kind of play and have fun with it and pick it up and put it down. Like that's, that's a game changer for me. And, you know, like I can't remember the last time I turned my PlayStation on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, I like, I haven't turned my Xbox on in like probably two months and my PlayStation, I hadn't turned on for like a month and a half, two months before we got like Diablo. I mm-hmm. think I mentioned it a couple weeks ago uh, when we were talking about, yeah. Like, yeah, I haven't turned my PlayStation on in a while. I've been mostly on the switch Uh, you know and just like watching i'm not upset Uh, about not turning it on because i know eventually something cool will come out that i'll play on it and i'll be happy that i have it it's just Uh, it's just different yeah and 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 that's the thing is like when you have like multiple platforms you're not tied into one platform you don't have to feel bad for not turning on like your video game machine Mm -hmm. because you have options uh but yeah uh, convergence that that's a recommend uh even if you're not into league of legends i think it's actually really good experience uh but other than that that's all i've been playing uh we are recording on a thursday because i did go to AEW dynamite which was in chicago on wednesday that was a super fun event i got to see some amazing like wrestling 
and I got to see like a lot of big stars that may have showed up but didn't wrestle. Uh, but seeing some people that I thought I would never really see in person wrestling was pretty damn cool. I mean, you had CM Punk, you had Shibata, Okada, uh, Murder Grandpa, uh, like doing a bunch of wrestling. I just, I just like throwing names out to see if Dave <laughs> flinches. Uh, and, and just, you know, seeing like the AW people that I really like, like Orange Cassidy, uh, it was just super fun. Uh, the show was like, from 6 to 10 45 which is a lot of wrestling we're starting to lose energy they basically we watched three shows it was like from seven to nine was the live show from eight to nine was the friday show like they recorded ahead of time uh and then from like 10 to 10 45 was their third show which is like a youtube show for reign of honor so it was a lot of wrestling uh which made me feel old because I like I worked that day. I got home, <laughs> met with my friends, went to wrestling, and then I went into the office today. I was fucking tired. <laughs> and I'm recording now. Like I had enough yeah. time to eat and then record with Dave. Uh so like I'm exhausted from wrestling and it made me feel old because I'm just like, man, as soon as ten o'clock hit and we we're still watching wrestling, I was like, I'm I'm kinda tired. Uh, uh and all I ate yesterday was nachos. So geez, it was like not a good time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I mentioned this, um, and if you, you'll tell me if I have or haven't. I don't know if, like, I know we've been a couple times since I recorded, but Angela and Owen and I, did, did I mention that we got season passes to Cedar Point? I did see you post something on Facebook. Yeah, I think. so I don't think I mentioned yeah, it yeah. on the show. So, like, no, no. Um, with all my store delays and everything that have been happening, Angela kind of decided to to purchase season passes to Cedar Point for myself, her, her and Owen. Um, so we have access to, like, the, the theme park and the water park as many times as we want. Uh, from now until like Halloween, um, including their the Halloween stuff that they do. Um, and Owen loves roller coasters now. Like it was like he we, we've been there three times already. Is he tall enough? I know you guys are all giant people, so is he <laughs> um, tall enough for so most he, of them. He is fifty one and seven eight inches tall. Okay. Uh, and uh, what so he, rides are forty eight? Forty eight, and right? some of them like any of the ones that your feet dangle mm-hmm. are fifty two. Okay. So he's actually been pretty pleasant about it. Um, I know I'm not going to put like sponges in his shoes or anything like that or make him wear like Spice Girl platform shoes or whatever. Um, so he's he's been pretty content about it. Um, he has ridden rides that go upside down. Um, we haven't gone on Millennium Force yet, which is the one I think it goes like 75 miles an hour or something like that or it's ridiculously fast. Um, we haven't done that one yet. So, But he's having a really good time and he's been pretty cool about the height thing. Um, There's a chance that by the end of the summer he will be the oh, height. He, he will be. Yeah, like, he yeah, should, like, yeah. he, I mean, he literally has it's to grow good... like an eighth of an inch. Like one, like it's, it's... It, Every time they look at it, they have to put like the T-square up against him. And they're like, um, come here. Like, hang on. <laughs> like, and they're like running this device yeah. through his hair. <laughs> so It's going to be a good moment when it, he yeah. finally goes up to it. And yep. He's going to get a different right get a different colored wristband but um so he's definitely <laughs> like that so I, i'm just kind of putting it out there I, I know that we have a couple of midwest people that listen to the show pretty regularly if you're going to cedar point at all like let me know like whether it's through facebook messenger or twitter or discord or whatever like let me know and he will give you his child so he doesn't have to <laughs> yeah um, i would know i'm saying if you like i could try to see if i can make it down there or something like that like it's only like two hours and ten minutes from my house to drive um, so we've left at like seven thirty in the morning. We get there at ten, and it's like at six o'clock. Okay, we're tired. Let's leave, and we're home by four nine. And Cedar Point's not a Six Flags, right? It's its own park. Correct. Okay, so that's good because yeah. like some Six Flags parks are pretty like run down, but I know Cedar Point's like a marquee. Yeah, they own a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, yeah. And you know, I've been you know overall like we've been, we've been pretty happy with it because it doesn't really look like I'm gonna be able to like go away for like you know six or seven or eight days at a time now like right now this summer with my store opening and stuff so but just wanted to put that out there so uh, so yep that is our show for this week um spotlight i would say right now is just go back and listen to any of the, the summer game fest content that we put out um you can follow us on twitter at digital days pod you can follow michael at the first mjc you can follow myself at good dave hunt thank you for those that reached out and wondering where we were <laughs> that means that you actually yeah. listen and we, we appreciate that um please consider leaving a review and um you know join the facebook group join the discord server check out patreon and uh i hope everyone has a great week and keep moving forward don't be a dick see you